guys, Pseudotech here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be making your very own operating system. Now, if you've been here a little bit, you might be wondering, well, haven't we done this before? And yes, we have done this before. But now we're going to have a new updated tutorial for the 7.10 book of Linux from scratch. It's going to be better audio, better quality, more fun, and it's going to go a lot faster. Now, before we get into the actual compilation process, making up the packages, making the system, you know, all that fun stuff, a few notes to get you started. One, I'm going to be leaving links down in the description below, just to different points in this video, so that if you lose me, or if you decide to take a break later and come back later, or whatever, you can just click those, go to the different sections. I'm not sure how many there will be yet, because I'm in the middle of recording this, but they'll be down there, so check them out. That being said, I don't really recommend restarting your computer during this process of this first video. I'll let you know how to do that later, but that could mess some things up just for now. Now we're going to be using the Linux from scratch book, which you can find again in the link down in the description. The book is incredible, so kudos to whoever made it. I'm not really sure off the top of my head who that is, but go check it out. It's going to be really helpful to follow along with the book as you do this tutorial. I'm going to be basically doing exactly what they say in the book, so you could just ignore this tutorial and go to there, but I think that especially for beginners, and especially for me when I was first doing it, it was very helpful to be able to see someone else doing it as he did it. The book kind of expects a little bit of a higher knowledge of Linux, and I'm going to try to do my best to explain the different things, so even if you're a complete beginner to Linux, this is actually a great way to get a handle on the system and start on your adventure. One last note, as you might note, I am running Ubuntu. You're going to need a Linux operating system. If you'd like to learn how to install a Linux operating system on either a virtual machine or on your computer, let me know and I'll make a video on it pretty quickly. I'm running Ubuntu 16.4, which is the long-term support version. You can run it whenever you want, whatever you feel most comfortable with. Ubuntu is definitely the one that has the most support in my opinion, and it's what I'm going to be using, so if you want to follow along at that, it'll all, it should all be the same, but Linux is pretty similar from distro to distro, which is distribution in case you aren't savvy with Linux yet. Also, I'm actually running it in VirtualBox, which is a virtual machine. This is simply to make it easier to record and use my computer at the same time. I'd actually recommend this if you know how to set up a VirtualBox um, or another virtual machine. It's just going to make your life a lot easier instead of having to dual boot with your existing system. But whatever works for you. Anyway. First things first, now we're actually getting into it. Making sure your host system is all set up with the correct requirements. This is pretty important because if your host system doesn't have certain packages and certain patches and like things that it's able to do, that it's not going to be able to do those things to our new operating system. Luckily for us, Linux from scratch, the book, has provided this super simple command, which you can see on screen, but I'd recommend just going and copying it from the book, pasting it into your terminal. And that's going to basically tell you all of the different things that you're missing. I should note that you should do this as sudo. Type sudo-s and then your password. This entire video will be doing as root just to make things easier. When you run that command, it's actually a script technically. It'll spit out, spit out a whole bunch of things that are going to say, like, successful. It'll tell you a version number, or sometimes it'll say command not found. You know, uh, something doesn't point to something. It failed. Anything that failed, you're going to want to install that package. So you can see I've got a few packages that I need to install. And I'm going to go ahead and use app-git that ins install for those. That's how you install a package in Ubuntu, if you haven't known, in most Linux distros. One of the problems I found I ran into was yak and make info. I had forgotten about it at the time, but they actually don't install with those exact words. But try it and just go ahead and take out any of the ones that are installing correctly for now. As you can see, Yak actually installed with a different package, which worked out fine. Make info is actually you should use text info for it. You can also see that I had a problem with a symbolic link for bash. 
You can go ahead and write the commands that I had on screen, which is ls-al-bin-sh, and that should output that it's two dash. You want to reroute that to bash, so you can do ln-sf bash slash bin slash sh, and that should take care of your issues. Now, assuming that you're all ready to go with the packages, there's one more thing to make sure that your host system meets the requirements, and that's these three funny files that kind of get in the way. Again, there's another script actually right below the script that we just ran earlier in the book. Again, the link to the book is in the description, and you're going to run that. If it says not found for all of them, then you're good. If it says found for all of them, then you're also good. You, you might run into issues if a few of them are there and not there. Check with your system. I didn't have them, and actually on a few distributions I haven't had them. I'm actually not sure what these files are, but it looks like there's some user configuration files or something like that. Anyway, they're in user slash lib. Maybe delete them, but definitely make sure that they're not doing anything first. I don't think you'll have this problem. If you're having this issue, let me know in the comments below with some details on your system and I can probably get back to you with how you should take care of that. All right, now that the host system is all set up, we're gonna start off with our actual operating system that we're creating. For this, we're gonna need to make a disk. Now, this can be an extra partition on your hard drive or it can be an external disk like I'm using. This is actually a virtual disk since it's in VirtualBox, but either should work. You're going to want to open up Disks, which is a handy dandy Ubuntu application. Otherwise, find the equivalent for your operating system. It might be the same. There's usually some sort of disk management tool included in every Linux operating system. As you can see, I have the regular hard disk, which is for my operating system. And then as if you go down a little bit, I have this 8 gigabyte other drive that is actually empty. It's not formatted or anything like that. Linux from scratch recommends at least 6 gigabytes. I'm going with 8 just to play it safe. On a virtual drive, I can always expand it, which is makes things a lot more, a lot easier to take care of. But I'd go for around 8 just to make sure you've got some headroom in case things go wrong. Part of the reason behind this is that when you compile packages, you're going to download a lot of source files that are actually going to be deleted afterwards. So you want to have to, you want to make sure that you have enough to store all those, but you'll actually end up deleting them later, so you'll be able to free up space that way. Now the main thing here is we want to note what device it's on. Right now it's mounted at slash dev slash sdb. That may be slightly different from you, but you're just going to want to note that down because that'll be used in the following commands. Now we're going to create the file system on our disk. For this, we use mkfs-v-t-ext4, which is the file system we're using. And then you're going to put that little kind of directory, I guess, that you found earlier. So in my case, it was slash dev slash stb. It'll ask you if you want to proceed anyway. It'll say yes, because you want to erase all this data. If you've got data on there, it will be erased. Make sure you back up that data first. Next, we're going to export the LFS variable. Now, this is a very important part. And from this section onwards until I say it's over, we're actually going to need to repeat this every time we restart our system so that we have it all properly configured. The LFS variable points to slash mount slash LFS. So you can see the commands are on screen. And this is going to make it, it's basically a shortcut so that it's easier to type our commands in the future. Next, we're going to make a directory, which is at LFS because it's not made, so make it. Again, commands on screen. And then finally, we're going to mount our drive that we just created as an ext4 onto that, onto that directory. So mount-v-t ext4, the name of the drive, which is dev sdb, and then lfs. So that's the portion that you're going to have to do every time you reboot your computer. If you're in my case and you're using a virtual machine, VirtualBox has this really handy feature where I can just save the machine state for later, which I'm going to be doing, just so you know. And that just eliminates the need to, because things aren't reset as if you're rebooting, which is fantastic. Next, we're gonna download all of the packages. There's a couple ways to do this, but I'm gonna show you the easiest way, because why wouldn't you wanna do the easiest way? Linux from Scratch provides a very good list of the packages that you're gonna need, all in a text file, which you can download, again, in the video description. 
it's wget dash list. You can download that with haha <laughs> wget and then the URL. Once we've got the file, we're going to make a directory that's at the LFS, which is the variable that we set earlier, and slash sources. So make that slash sources. And then we're going to change the permission scheme of this folder so that it's sticky, which basically means that no matter who's using it, only the owner of it can delete from it. You can look in the book, which has a few more details if you're interested, but it's not very important to making this system right now. Now, quick command which I'm not going to read off, but you can see on screen, and it's also in the book, it's going to basically take all the the list of sources from this thing that we just downloaded and download them all. When you press enter, it's going to download a whole bunch of sources. These are all the packages, the tarballs that we're going to need for making our system. This is like the rudimentary system right here going onto your disk. Now, obviously, it's going to depend on how fast your network was, for me, it took a little bit over three minutes, I think about three and a half minutes to get it all the way through. Obviously, that'll depend on you, but it could take a while. So go ahead, grab a cup of coffee. I don't care what you do. All right, final stretch here. Last thing we have to do with the packages and patches that we just downloaded is make sure that they were actually downloaded correctly and that they're not corrupted. For this, we're going to download, just like we did before, wget, but this time md5sums, which is another file provided by Linux from scratch. Next, we're going to push it, which you can you can basically follow the commands here that are in the Linux from scratch book, and check all the md5sums. And if they all say OK, then you're good to go. If one doesn't, you're going to want to re-download that until you get it correct, because a corrupt package could be detrimental to the LFS system. Now we already downloaded the sources, but we're actually going to build those into a different directory as the LFS book recommends. To do this, make a directory that's LFS slash tools. Then we can create a symbolic link between this and the guest and the host operating system's root directory. So this would be, in my case, the Ubuntu version that I'm running. So this is just slash. Make that symbolic link between tools and the root directory, and you should be good to go. All right, finally, last step, we're gonna create a new user for the Linux from scratch system. This is not for the Linux from scratch system. This is to build the Linux from scratch system, and it's actually gonna be on your host computer. So just do group add LFS, and then user add with the command on screen or in the book. I'm not gonna shout out all the commands because they're kinda of long and you can just read them or copy paste them, whatever you want. Set a new password for it, now we're going to configure it a little bit. We want to change the ownership of LFS tools and LFS sources to the new LFS user. The main thing about this user is that it's not a pseudo user, but it's still going to have access to these files, which is important in case we make a mistake. Now, usually you're going to want pseudo permissions. It's not a bad idea to have it. But if you make a mistake, it could be really bad for the system or your host system just because you've got all that power too much power, let's get rid of it by making a new user that's very specific. Next you can type su-lfs to get into the new user. Next we're going to do some more configuration with some more commands similar to the ones that you saw earlier that you can find in the LFS book. Copy paste them, pop them in, run it, you should be good to go. And that is actually all I have for you all today. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, found it enjoyable, found it helpful, please leave a like down below so that other people can find this video and make their very own operating system. If you had any questions or comments or suggestions on this video, which would actually be very helpful so that I can improve, leave them down in the comments below. I read them, I'll respond if like it's something that I should respond to if you have a question, to my best. And that's about it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.